Well, hello. I guess we are live. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm really hyped to get started on this and to get my hands on this Cinematic Studio Strings version 1.7. Um, thanks for being here, Simon, Paul, Jelle. How did you update the library? There's no update available in my native access. Um, I can show you. You don't need, it's not listed in updates. Um, it's actually just a reinstall that you need to do. Um, so if you go to your uh, libraries and then um, back up your original Cinematic Studio series first, and when you've done so, you can just reinstall the uh, previous one. When it's done, it will say that you have version 1.7 installed. Um, so you can try that out. I hope that will work. Um, so for those of you who didn't see the community post, I high C's got the most votes, but actually I decided to um, do Molto Piratissimo. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, because there hasn't been any remakes of that on YouTube. And I thought it would be a good thing to that I would be the first to do so. High Seas already has some remakes. Um, and also, actually, it aligns pretty great now with the fact that Cinematic Studio Series has this update, which is also heavily focused on the new Marcato patch. Because boy, are we going to need that one. Um, so yeah, Jelle, if you look in your library and then here you will see uh, Cinematic Studio Strings. It will be listed at 1.5 for you now. Uh, but if it says 48.59 gigabytes, you go here uh, and do a reinstall and then you should be good. All right, so without further ado, I guess I'm just going to dive in immediately. Um, I hope you all know this track and let's see how long we can keep this up until we get copyright striked. I have no idea, but let's see. If we can get until there, I will be very happy, um, but we'll see. And I'm just gonna start right away. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think I'm gonna need just some Mercatos here, some shorts to back it up. I'm just gonna unmute this, wait. Here we go, so I can do some things at the same time. Sorry about that. I am cheating a little bit because I did a little bit of prep work. <laughs> so I would not be uh, with my mouth full of tea just when I started. So uh, it's going to be fun to see how we can make the uh, alteration between short notes that are lying underneath. I think I will need to double that with uh, some Metropolis arc. Because if you listen very closely to the... If you listen very closely to the chords that are happening underneath... It has quite a sharp edge. I think it's just D minor chords. I think I'll need to double that with some Metropolis arc. So I'm just gonna load those up right away while I am at it. Uh, let's see which one will work best. And I'm gonna mix that in very quietly when we're there, uh, that, it, that it doesn't take away too much from... Uh, because I think don't think it sounds that realistic to Metropolis Arc Shorts uh, compared to the Cinematic Studio Strings, but it has this... It has this high end, which is uh, a little bit aggressive, which I think will blend very nicely. It's also how we did it in the uh, Race to Durango remake. Um, but let's just start off with this uh, high line. I think I'm going to do it in the shorts first and then transition it to Marcato and see how we can get those to work, the new Marcato patches. One thing I have already noticed, by the way, the hiss is gone, uh, which is great because I'm, heavy, I'm carrying quite a lot of parallel compression in my template and uh, it became quite clear that this hiss was there. Um, but let's just get started. There we go again. Let me think. Mm. 
でるトゥトゥルトゥトゥン。ディグリグルン。And that's where he goes up. I'm gonna do this in the Mercado after all. Let's see. Yeah, that's the start. Let's just get that in and figure out the automation afterwards. Sorry, I messed up where I'm starting. Almost. I got a bit confident there. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm really liking the sound of this new Mercato, by the way. Uh, so we're having... Da -da 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 -da. It's always long, short, long, short. Uh, let me see. My playing wasn't that right, so I'm just gonna... And if we are having Legato active, then it should be with the new runs mode. This needs a little bit of an accent. Oh, wait. It's 30 second notes. <laughs> Good morning. I knew that. This is not right at all. Okay, I'm just gonna record this and worry with the timing later. That should do the trick. Maybe I'm still used to the old Cinematic Studio series that I'm now trying the tricks that I'm uh, used to that work in relation with the new version. So it's some muscle memory that I think I have to get out, but we'll work on that over time. So it's long. Um, do, do. Yeah, it's always long, short, short. Until there, it sounded pretty all right. Do, 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 do. I, <laughs> I know now why I just messed the timing up. We're not in eighth notes, we're in triplets. So it's not 30 second notes, it's not eight notes. Uh, we're working in a six, eight bar, but every click on Cubase is three eighth notes. Um, yeah, good morning. Triplets, there we go. I'm just gonna quantize these real quick. A bit of an accent. I like how these two are alternating each other. Uh, in terms of expression maps, by the way, I'm working with the standard, which is legato on, overlay on, sordino off. So we get the uh, punch of the short notes with the second and the third, and also the legato from the one transitioning to the second. And now Cubase is auto saving. Right. This needs a bit more. This is too long. Love the sound and character of the new 1.7 Mercatos. Thanks for your time. So do I. And thank you for your comments. This is too early. This. What I would usually do when I'm doing something like this, maybe I'll do it as well, is when I have like a group of two or three, that I like the sound of and that are working together, I just copy them and then try to vary it a little bit in timing and everything, but it does save a lot of time if I do it that way in the end. This is too much now. Let me see if I can change the modulation there a little bit. I don't want it to be too loud. I want to have some space until for when we build to the next section later. 
I'm just going to copy these. Do -do 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 -do. And then we just have this phrase down and it goes up at C sharp. This last one needs a bit less. If this starts to get boring, this is what it comes down to in the end. Uh, <laughs> sculpting of these. This needs more, this needs less, more or less. But you don't like, you hear this one. Uh, this is louder than that one. And we really want this. Too much. I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to give the seconds a little bit more. Because I feel like they are dropping off a bit compared to the first one. Maybe I'm gonna try something. Because this is what we're aiming for. Not that loud in here as well, the second one. It's really ta -da 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 -da, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, where, where are we again? This needs more. All right, let's finish that melody before we get stuck on this for ever. Of course, it's a 5-1. We go from A, D minor. And I think to start off, I'm gonna be lazy. I'm sorry. Do -do -dim. I think that one is short, isn't it? Yeah, that's short. Why am I not? Because it's muted. Oops.
There we go. It's quite funny. A lot of people always uh, compare this track that uh, Thomas Bergerson is like writing Vivaldi or um, like Baroque or classical music. And I think that is because uh, in a lot of Thomas's music, let's see if I can uh, get a piano involved. My pedal is gone. <laughs> So here we have it's uh, when in a lot of Thomas's music when he moves to the seventh of the scale, so we're in D minor, he often goes with the flat seventh. Um, but here in this piece, he heavily uses. The raised seventh, which is something we hear a lot in classical music. It's actually the harmonic slash melodic minor scale, um, which you don't hear that often from Thomas. It's when you have in a minor sequence where you have the in the five chord, you have the raised seventh. While in a lot of Thomas's music, he goes. So that's a little bit of an intermezzo. Um, let's get back to the remake, of which we have done a little bit. I like that. I think it's just a G minor chord now. And yeah, because then we get. If I'm silent, I'm concentrating. I hope that's all right. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. So we have D minor again. D minor, G minor. Suspended A. And then we're in D minor. So, yeah, okay, I'm gonna listen one more time because while explaining, I forgot it. And it's also short notes, so we repeat this little phrase. There was a different note. Oh, auto save. Don't forget to save your projects. If I keep pointing here instead of there, it's because here I have the stream open. Uh, just so you know. <laughs> Mute this. I'm not crazy, am I? I often find that it helps when you're doing stuff like this to um, sometimes there are just so many notes going on that you first figure out some anchor points that you can then uh, fill out the rest in between. So here I'm looking for... Those are the notes I want to get first and then what happens in between it becomes much easier to fill in um, once I have these anchors in place. When I was doing the Race to Durango remake at some point there's this stupid ostinato going on with the uh... 
something like that. Uh, and I was just figuring on those anchor points, get those in place first, and then go back. Um, which I'm trying to do here as well, but... I think it's a D. It's not a D. There's no notes here. It's the um, lower chords that I keep. It's the lower chords that I keep thinking are part of the melody. That's decent. All right. With this in place, um, I'm just going to focus on the notes first. And then afterwards, I'll go back over it and see if I have to, can layer some stuff. And... Um, to get the sound more like Thomas's sound. Uh, but so far I'm really liking how these uh, Marcato sound. Um, like I said, the hiss is gone, this run could do a little bit of work, uh, but that's on my end, not on uh, Cinematic Studio Strings's end. This does have a legato, right? I think this just needs a little bit of... Or I'm gonna try something, turn the oh, uh, overlay off. Not for the first one though. A little bit of like accents. And then this one. This needs to be short. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's catch up here. The best just got better. If you're talking about the uh, Thomas with the melodic minor, I agree. Um, great to see him do more stuff like this. Um, if you're talking about me, thank you very much. <laughs> Other than old projects, do you guys have any reason to keep the previous version? I'm finding hard to just justify the disk space. 1.7 sounds and plays better in every way. I think what I'm doing is I um, today I did a lot of exports on some projects I was working on but I'm also working on a game at the moment and I just started with a score suite. So I am not in the position where I have like a bunch of projects that are in the middle of that make it very hard for me, which is kind of a luxurious position, I have to say. Um, but for that one, I, what I've noticed is that it's actually quite easy to transfer the uh, MIDI data back and forth uh, because expression maps are the same. It's just the timings of the low latency legato, I think, and maybe the timings of the short notes. Um, I actually haven't changed the track delays. I haven't put in any track delays I see now. That's something I forgot when I was updating my template. Um, and I hear it now. I think it always used to be minus 60, not 560. I think it's minus 50. But yeah, so far what I've noticed, it's not that hard to go back and forth between the two. Uh, it actually sounds pretty easy. So what I would suggest is get your hands on a new one, just delete the old ones and um, update your projects. I don't think it takes that much time. Uh, what I would suggest is make a template with just these... Um, What I would suggest is to uh, grab these uh, tracks, make them a template, and then import the tracks from um, import the tracks in Cubase with file import tracks from project. Hi, Salim, welcome. Santi, congrats on making OST. Is this your first video game project? Also, what it is about? I got curious. It's not my first. It's actually my second. I did my first one early this year, which was in closed beta. They are now um, 
working on collecting feedback, making plans for the future. So I will get back on that in like, I think a late this year, early next year. This new game I'm working on is a puzzle platformer, quite atmospheric. And I met those guys when I went to DEF CON in Vilnius a couple of weeks ago. And we started the process like one or two weeks ago, but it's a very cool project. It's super inspiring to work for. And I'm, a, yeah, I'm a very grateful. Um, thank you all. Thanks all for being here, by the way. Um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, before I got on this little in-between rant, I was saying we should continue to the chords that are happening underneath. And I'm just now trying to decide with um, what instruments I'll do this with. Strings, obviously, but um, in terms of which, because the cellos and basses come in later. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so this is where cellos and basses enter. So before that, we're just going to do it with violins and violas. And I think I'll start off with the low note. And I should have done these track delays before I got started. But oh, oh well. When you're doing something like this, uh, it always helps to start with the outer voices and then slowly work your way in. And it often helps to see which chords are being played and then um, work from there. So here I'm just trying to start by figuring out the bass notes and then I'll move on to the uh, upper and inner voices from there. Oh, too early. It's D. Then we go to E. I think it's just D and E alternating. No, 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 no. There's a C sharp edit here. Yeah, so we're gonna go C sharp. Without that one. I'm just gonna put the notes in and we'll worry about the sound later. Right, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the core, the whole chord in the violas and then start dividing them over uh, violas and violins too. Did I miss anything? Sounds great, good luck on that. I'm slowly getting my hands into the game industry as well. Good luck. It's, uh, I find, I come from films and what I find in games is that it's way more of a collaborative experience, uh, in my experience, that you're way more... With film, you often talk to a director. If you're lucky, you talk to an editor. And if you're really lucky, you talk to the sound designer. Uh, no, all the way around. If you're lucky, you talk to the sound designer. And if you're really lucky, you talk to the editor. Uh, but in games, everyone is dependent on each other. Like I need gameplay information from game designers. Uh, I need to talk about script, like what's gonna happen and where will uh, gameplay influence the music that I'm writing. Uh, I need programmers to help me get my music in and also to hear like, is it possible if I try to do this? Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed the experience and I wish you best of luck, Santi. Um, I always say with networking, uh, the, it's don't be an asshole. That's the my number one networking tip. Uh, but I don't think you're an asshole because you're here. Thank you very much. And let's fill out the rest of these chords. Is there an F? There is an F. Oh, sorry. Oh, 
do do do. They're also an A. At least we have F going to G. Oh, I got excited there with a note that was not there. That should just be a G, I think. What note is this? B flat, then there is also an A, because then we go. A little bit of seven diminished seven action. Uh, I'm just gonna go like this. I'm very. <laughs> Thanks, Salim. And that sounds right. There is something happening in the inner voices here. We go back. I think we just go back to A major. If you were on the impression that I always play in every note that you see, um, this may be a very eye-opening experience. <laughs> For me as well, I have to admit. It becomes very confronting when you're copying stuff when there are, at the moment, 20 people watching. <laughs> And there is something happening in the inner voices there. I think that's it. What is it? The E that's going up or the A that's going down? Mute this. Um, I think I hear it's the slightest major second in there. Yeah, I do. Over here. Do you hear it? So then it, that would mean that it is this E is jumping up. And then we close off with the D minor. Let's see what this sounds like with the melody we did earlier. I was cheating. I was figuring, I was, <laughs> oh my God. I thought this sounds so great. What am I doing? Is this CSS, but I forgot to mute the full mix. All right. <laughs> this can go to the highlight reel. All right.
Well, that was easy. Yeah, I thought so, but it turns out it's not. <laughs> yeah, but I, after listening to it again, I realized I do need uh, more on this. I'm thinking, uh, because that's also a new feature, let's play around a little bit with the mix of... Change this, didn't I? With the uh, mix, because we have the new spot mics. Turn those up a little bit. Because um, what I've noticed lately, also when I was doing the race to Durango, it's very often um, quite close. There's a lot of reverb involved, but it's also, you do get the detail of the string sound. Um, so I'm going to try and see what happens if I just turn up the spot mics. This is too much. I'm also going to put this in... I am not sure. Let's see what do we have available? I'm just gonna put this in very softly, and while we're at it, there is no cello on this lower chord, is there? No, there is definitely no cello in there. Um, I think put it like this. Remove the lower voice. Get in my track delays. And then here I'll remove the upper voices. Mute to full mix. I'm not happy yet. Maybe uh, I should just try a different art. We need more of an accent on the one. I knew this one was going to take a lot of time because it's very fast. There's a lot of notes. Uh, but then if you, if you get used to a new library, it's going to take a while. Need this to be more pronounced. Uh, let me s just try out another one. No, <laughs> maybe on the first ones. No, yeah, make this all small. Or I'm just playing around with the articulations a little bit uh, because they have also been improved and I'm just uh, figuring out what I like. Next thing I'm trying is to have the second and third be staccatis, repet uh, repetition, spiccato, and then the other ones uh, staccatissimo. That sounds better. Let's also go. Trying to get the same information to the other track. Did it? It did not. Uh, let me see. This is a G.
Just copying this information over to the other voices. And uh, this is all just A's. Oh. Vary the timing a little bit. Now, uh, either the first needs to be louder or the others need to be softer. I think it's both. <laughs> Do you guys think oh. I'm gonna see what happens if I double it in Metropolis Arc? No. It does add a I'm starting to think there may be cello in there. In here. There is cello in there. There you go, you change your mind three times during one live stream. You go there. You go there, you go away. Uh, this is just the A. This needs to be the other way around. Uh, let me see. Not aggressive enough. Maybe it needs to be louder. And I just need to crank everything up and stop being so careful. Because I'm treating this as if it's a very delicate string shorts, but it's actually way more aggressive than that. Right. Now we're getting there. And then that's where the bases come in. Uh next thing, mid-string shorts. I think this is just violas and um jelly. And copy this over. You heard that? That room noise? That's stuck in Metropolis Arc and it's an issue, <laughs> if you ask me. Okay, I think now we have the right intensity, but uh, now it's too loud. And 
maybe this is just too much. Maybe I need to divide these, get the bottom node out of here. And the top ones out of here. So now I make sure the mid strings are just playing the viola. They are just viola and cello. They play the lower line and the high strings. I believe that's violas and violins. They play the top notes. Fair. All right, getting quite close. Just a volume thing now, but I think I'm gonna see how they sound together and. All right, this is now just completely falling away. I think what I'm going to do is double these with regular shorts. Not that one, but that we have a little bit more of a, uh, some more um, attack and bite on the shorter notes that go in between. So here I'm going to... That's short. There we go. And make these a staccato. Or a sforzato. Make these staccatissimo. And let's just see what happens if we layer those together. What's the problem now? It's... I'm asking a question thinking the stream is at the same time, but there's a slight delay. It's the uh, second note is too loud. Let's see how those are together. That does not sound bad. I like that. Uh, it's just a balancing thing now, but I think I want to finish these notes first and then work on balance. Um, what do you guys think? Um, let me know if you have uh, thoughts. I think we're getting quite close. Uh, it's just now a matter of uh, finishing the section and fixing some notes. And we got the bases coming in here. And I already know I'm going to need some autosave. That's true. But also, the Metropolis low strings along with the double basses. And I think the cellos are breaking off there. Oh, that's not a cello. <laughs> Let's see what they are playing. Mm. <laughs> Let's just get those in first. Do 
I cannot sing so low. It's a low D that's too low for me. Is it tum or tum? It's it repeats. Here we go. I think that's right. And then we are going to play that in the basses as well. I think the bases are only entering on bar six here. Or, and that they are in this higher octave. I think that's what's happening. Delays, track delays. That seems all right. Hi, Joris. Thanks for joining us. We are in the middle of using uh, the Cinematic Studio Strings updates to remake Molto Piratissimo by Thomas Bergerson. And I am not going along as quickly as I had hoped, but we're making some decent progress. Um, I think we have the base entrance sorted now. I'm listening to this inner voice now. I don't have perfect pitch. I don't. It's also what's happening in. It's the same as what's happening. to listen to this without you guys. Ends on what? Right. <laughs> 
And they are a bit longer. Not that long. All right, I can't figure out these inner voices exactly. I think I'm just going to guess. As we have here, that's then B flat major, G minor, and A. And we need to fill out the violas. So we need an F, a G. That's not here already. That is there already. All right, let's see where we're at. No, after we've done this. Doubling. Let me see. So this middle voice needs to have the viola, which is F, D, E. I'm just going to copy those over for the time being. Did you figure out the chords first and laid out the voicings or going instrument by instrument? It uh, depends. Um, when I just started, I work on the bass line first and then I try to fill out the voices that go on top of that. Um, but here I am thinking, I'm looking at the melody and the bass line where we are going um, something like... So I know we're going B flat major, G minor, and A. And I just, I'm not sure exactly what's happening in the middle there because it's, uh, it's quite dense, hard to figure out. Um, so I'm now just writing some notes that I think will be there because that's what would make sense. Um, if that makes sense. And I hope that answers your question. So we have, this needs to be A. This was the same as the bass. And then only thing left. Gotcha, great. And this is again just for, um, to get this aggressive edge on the cinematic studio strings. Uh, let's just. This needs to be soft. Right, let's compare where we are at the moment with the original. Right, some things I am happy with. I think we pretty much nailed the chords and the notes. I think I could use some more time on the how this uh, short passage sounds, but I think I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, I've closed my windows. Hi, Maxi. Thanks for joining. So sorry you're joining us in the end. <laughs> um, I'll go over. You're still downloading. Yeah, it takes a while. I think mine took like two and a half to three hours. Um, Let's just go over what we did one more time. And like I said, I would probably spend a lot more time on this uh, melody on top. Because now it's just the notes are there and there is like a general feeling of the ta-da-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. -da 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 -da. But I want to detail that a bit more. 
but that's um, something that I not I don't think that's very interesting for a live stream because that's me going over it a million times and listening back to it. Um, but for now, the chords are there, the intensity is there, uh, the chords are there, the intensity is there, and it's now just a matter of balancing things out, uh, getting the intensity right, and then move on to the next section. And it's also after we've it's good to spend a lot of time on this first section and then uh, continue to the next part. You already have some things in place, some balancing in place. You know some general ideas of how to make this, um, like these repeated string notes sound. Um, so we can continue and it will take less time in the future. But for now, in an hour, I think we got quite some work done. And I hope you have enjoyed this. Oh, wow, we got a lot of chats at the moment. Uh, Maxi, I totally missed it. I will keep the video up. Uh, for sure. No worries that you missed it. I appreciate you for joining anyway. Uh, thanks a lot. Thomas, you got the stems of the song? I do. If you go to Extreme Music, you can uh, find the stems. It's only orchestra, percussion and choir, but the opening is only strings yet, so uh, it's still quite... Uh... For now, we didn't need them, but in the future, I will separate those out. Uh, and those will be very useful. And Yanju, hi Tom, do you use expression maps for this piece? Yes, I do. You can see me going to this little menu here quite often, which is where you can select your expression maps. I have made my own expression maps for Cinematic Studio Series, and uh, not this one here, uh, which you can, I will link those in the description when I close off the stream, so you can get those there if you want. Uh, they are on Coffee. you can download them for free, and I've also made a video on how you can make these expression maps for yourself. Um, with that being said, Let's play the version where we left it off one more time uh, with Melody needs more work, Balancing needs more work, but where we are now. I think that's a great start. Thank you all for joining me on my first live stream. Um, I think that went quite well. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you're welcome, Yanju. And thank you all for joining me. Uh, the video will stay up if you want to, if there are sections you want to watch back later, or uh, if you have any more questions, reach out to me on either YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to find me. Thank you all for joining me. I uh, really appreciate that. And I think for the next part, like I said, there's a lot of detailing that I want to do. I will do that on my own, um, but maybe there's a section in the future where I think it would be interesting to do a live stream again. I will let you know. Uh, thanks for joining. I hope you have a great evening or rest of your day. Uh, thanks, Salim, uh, that it was pretty cool. I appreciate that. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you very much.